Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. Welcome to Tie Game Nation Entertainment. I am your host, Tie Game Michael. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell, like, comment, and share this video because we got some things to talk about. And, bitch, we going to talk about it. Tie Game Nation. No game but Tie Games. You won't now promote me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. That's what you say when you got to talk to somebody. You know how sometimes you really got to talk to somebody and you got to get it off your chest? And they be like, oh, I ain't got time for that, man. You just hit them with that. Just be like, bitch, we going to talk about it. I don't care what you ain't got time for. I got some stuff to get off my chest. I'm going to get it off my chest. Today is day three of the Snitch Chronicles, a.k.a. the Sorry Nigga, I'm Trying to Come Home Chronicles, Future and Takashi. I said I would keep y'all updated on this case I intend to do that until the very end, until we get a resolution. Woo! There's so much stuff going on today, man. He he done threw some more people under the bus. Man, this... I'm going to go ahead and read this transcript to y'all via the Inner City Press. And I'm going to give you some of my wonderful commentary that I know that y'all come here for. And I appreciate each and every last one of y'all for coming. I appreciate it. We going to jump right into it. So they say, okay, we're back. Day three of 6-9 trial after the jury just saw har um, carjacking and kidnapping of Takashi. So... They, you know, they showed the video of him getting kidnapped. Shit, I guess that shit was not a motherfucking drill. It says, government introduces text message from Harv, apparently 6 9 And if, you, if you're lost and you don't know where we at, make sure that you check out my other 6 9 videos. I will leave a link in the description below if you need to watch those videos to get caught up. You understand? So, it says, government... Introduces text messages from Harv. Apparently, 6 9 will be um, reading them for the jury. But first, he explains why he publicized his own kidnapping. And he said, I knew Harv had a video, so I wanted to get mine out there first. Yes, sometimes that is the best thing to do. You ever get your ass whooped in life, and you know it just looks a lot better if you just tell people you got your ass whooped before they go around telling everybody they done whipped your motherfucking ass. Sometimes that's the smart thing to do. Get it out there first. So that way, they can't use it against you. They're going to be like, I whooped his ass. They're going to be like, we know. He told us already. He said, you hit him with a left jab, right hook, uppercut, knocked him clear out. I thought you was going to tell me something new. And then it don't sting no more. Kind of like that B-Rabbit freestyle in 8 Mile from back in the day. That Eminem movie for some of y'all who may not know. He said, as jury is shown video of shoddy car in front of 370 Madison, 6 9 on the witness stand, stretches and yawns. He's stretching and yawning on the witness stand. And nigga again, I, maybe he's getting tired of all this telling. I don't know. Shit. That, it'll, it'll wear on you. I guess shit. I don't know. It says, unclear yet how he'll react under cross examination by the lawyers for Harvard Nuke. And then it says the judge rules that government um, exhibit 808 can only be considered by the jury against Harv, not Newt. So they was trying to put some evidence into, um, to the court. The judge said it can only be bought against um, Harv and it can't be used against Newt. It says now 6 9 is asked about the phrase on deck. Will he use it in a sentence? And then 6 9 going to say got the Henny on deck like in the club. He uses the word lingo. He lear he's learning shit during this child because you remember if y'all checked out my um, day one, he they asked him about lingo. He didn't know what the fuck lingo was, but, you know, he's learning. So he's telling on people and learning shit all at the same time. God damn. This dude is a magician. Let me see. It says now with the jury out the room, the judge tells the government to show how it would question 6 9 about what Shadi told him in Santa Ana, California, um, California, about the incident in Smurf Village back in Brooklyn. Said then they took 6 9 out the court. Now 6 9 says he offered 50000 for someone to rob Harv. This is after Harv carjacked and kidnapped him. Man, I'm trying to tell you, man. 
This dude, six nine, start playing life like a motherfucking video game. Like he really took this gangster shit serious. That nigga, that nigga was playing life like a, a PS4 and just thought that he can put the controller down once the game was over and go do some other shit. Nah, nigga, real life don't work like that. You don't get to just put the controller down and stop and go do whatever the hell else you want to do. He was like, I'm done playing this game. Ah. Nigga, that motherfucking controller came right back like a boomerang and smacked his ass upside the back of the head. He like, nah, this, this is real life play. You can't do that. So he's offering 50000 to um the um harm to do that kidnapped him. It says, now 6 9 says that on Power 105.1, he denounced them, saying that Trey Ray is a fraud, dirty bloods, when he says he know this will make him a target. Judge tells the jury to disregard it. I remember that interview when he went on there at 105.1. That's when you knew shit was going down, because you was like, if you have any type of sense at all, you was like, he's starting to separate himself from them, some shit gonna be going down. The feds is kicking in those, and you know that's that's what you're supposed to do. Try to distance yourself. So when they come get you, you be like, man, I ain't even fuck with them like that. But apparently they didn't need to do none of that because he started talking as the second that he got caught. It says now a wiretap wiretap call with Mel Murder reviewing Six Nine's interview on Power 105, where he said Trey Way was a fraud. He must be on drugs. You got to go. You're going to go on social media with it. I feel kind of depressed. It says the wiretap call continues. We made you who you was so you could help us with our situation. We gave you life. You won't be shit without Trey Way. And you know what? That is absolute facts. They wouldn't. He wouldn't be shit without Trey Way. It was the whole package of him coming out with rainbow hair and everything. And but being a real gangster blood People was really drawn to his image because at first it was a little bit confusing. And then he made hot songs on top of that. So Trey Way did give him that stamp. Like a lot of rappers, a lot of rappers, they come in and they get a stamp from somebody and it allows them to, you know, blow up with their career. But most of the time when you do that, when they don't need you no more, they try to separate themselves from you and leave you behind and that's a lot of times where the issues start happening because then people you know start wanting to go on shootings and what what all he said they did shooting robberies murders all this other shit that he said and the other day and they said um they asked six nine have you heard of the term dry snitching and then six nine said it's a term on the street when you snitching without snitching it's like and then the judge said, I don't think we need to hear any more on this answer. They said, who is, what the, f oh, shit. Oh, my goodness. Make sure I'm reading that right. What the, damn. They asked him, who is Jim Jones? 6 ix 9 said he's a, he's, a, he's a retired rapper. They said, is he a member of 9Trey? 6 ix 9 said yes. God damn. God damn. damn it. That nigga must have called Jim Jones and said, sorry, nigga, I'm trying to come home. I don't give nigga nobody safe, nigga. Nobody safe. I don't give a damn who you is. I don't care if you was my best friend in elementary school and you took somebody motherfucking chocolate milk and gave me some and it wasn't yours, nigga. I'm telling on you. I don't care. I don't care who you was, man. I don't care if you was the lady at Walmart and I was short five cents five years ago and you went ahead and let me slide. Bitch, you stealing from the company. I'm telling on you, too. Goddamn. Damn, Jim Jones, man. I mean, everybody already know he's a blood, but damn. Because, you know, Jim Jones had been repping blood, you know, since he came out. Sorry, nigga. I'm trying to come home. He living by that. He don't give a fuck what y'all think. Shit, y'all can laugh and talk about Takashi all the fuck you want to. But he probably in his head like, I'm going to have the last laugh because I'm getting the fuck up out of here. Mm, mm, mm. Who will he tell on next? Let's see. It says next call. 
It says every time you look at it on YouTube or Worldstar, you see Shoddy with this shit. He didn't get enough money for that. Now his show's all canceled. He ain't a gang member no more. And then it says TMZ want to talk to the nigga on Monday. And then they said we don't need to be on TMZ. So they still playing the wiretap call. And it said, you better stalk that shorty. No security going to want to work for him. He going to have to stay in your house. Security of New York can't run around with guns, right? Unless they ex-cops. Mm. So they, they right now, they plotting. They plotting right now. It says, 6 9 is perched in the witness chair listening to this wiretap call. It said, you ain't never put no work in. So who the fuck are you? We made that little nigga. We can break that little nigga. We're going to paralyze him. 6 9 put his hands on his chin, on his palm, and slouches. Mm. Okay. So he's listening to this wiretap call. And, you know, maybe he, he's having recollections and he, maybe he's getting nervous right now. Damn, damn, damn. I'm going to tell you something, though. I'm going to tell you something. The second that 6 9 heard that wiretap call, because I do believe, like, they, they like, picked him up for a little bit, then let him go. But then they had, but then after some shit popped off, they went, they went ahead and arrested him real quick. The second he heard that um, phone call, they, because I, trust me, the cops, the feds, they played it for him. They said, you better come work for us because this is what's about to happen. They talking about violating you, super duper violating you. You're going to super. They probably looked at him and said, man, have you ever been super duper violated? This ain't no regular violation. And at that moment, if Takashi was like, I'm telling everything on these niggas. Everything. Because let's be honest. Let's let's be honest. OK, they they had they had to expect it. You can't. You can't fuck a nigga baby mama, steal his shows, extort him, kidnap him, and beat his ass, and then expect him to keep it so-called G and not tell on nobody. Like, if we want, if we gonna be 100, you ain't about to do all that to somebody, and then they gonna be like, well, you know what, I'm gonna still stay, and I'm gonna still get these 20, 30 years anyway, because I'm a motherfucking gangster. I'm a motherfucking keep it G. When he wasn't even that... From the beginning. Like he was never there from the beginning. And y'all know that. So why is y'all in court yelling some, you know, Trey way we don't bend, we don't fold, we don't break. Like that was gonna, like trying to send a secret message to him. Like we ain't saying shit. You shouldn't say shit either. They were saying all that shit. Takashi was over there like this. I already told on y'all. Matter of fact, motherfucker, I'm still telling. I watched this show on Netflix. It's called um, Murderous Affairs, um, Justice Served, right? And it's it's like it's like one of those snap type shows where it'd be like a lot of people are in relationships or a lot of people that's married and they always end up killing their husband or killing their wife or something like that. Now, it's always a woman on that show who is able to convince some dude to kill her husband. But then after he kills her husband for the insurance money, they start going ghost on that dude, not picking up his calls, not returning his emails or nothing like that. And then be shocked when he turn around and go to the cops and tell on you, you can't convince a man to kill your husband for the insurance money and then go ghost on him. Cause he thinking y'all about to have a relationship and the only thing that's in way is your husband. Just like you can't expect Takashi to not tell on these niggas when he was never a gangster to begin with. Nine times out of 10, if you're a rapper and you facing 20, 30 years, they gonna motherfucking tell. That's nine times, you ain't even gotta be a rapper. That's nine times out of 10 with just people, period. You, they start talking 30, 40 years, chances is they probably going to tell. The only rappers that out here that ain't telling is Lil Boosie. That's it. <laughs> it's crazy. It, it, it's crazy. So it says, let me see. It says now the um, now they asked 6 9 about his cooperation agreement. 
He told the government he brokered a one kilo of heroin deal in Brunswick around August of 2017. Also sold heroin and marijuana in 2015. Got five days of community service. Damn. He sold heroin and marijuana and only got five days of community service. You know, people been saying that Takashi was a cop from the beginning. He may just have been. This nigga out here selling keys. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But he's going to tell you. You know what? They need to ask Takashi what's the secret formula to the Krabby Patties. Because I'm sure he know Plankton need to go ask him what's the secret formula to the Krabby Patties. I, I bet you Takashi know. They need to ask Takashi who shot Biggie. I bet you Takashi know. That shit is crazy. They need to ask him, was it crack that Popeye was putting in their chicken sandwich? Because I bet you 6 ix 9 to know. He'll know. Matter of fact, it seems like 6 ix 9 got the answers to all your questions. Shit, y'all may want to write this dude in jail. You probably, only, you probably only got four days left to write him before he gets out. Ask him some, some questions about life. Are we alone in the universe? And then 6 9 said, I punched a guy in Times Square with shoddy. And in Houston, I grabbed a fan by his jacket. The case is still pending, I think. Well, it ain't going to be pending for too much longer because, mother, you just admitted to it. So that fan going to get a check. She attack season coming early for some people. It says, it says, question, Mr. Hernandez, have you been sentenced? He said, no. What is the maximum you face? He said, life. What is your understanding of a 5K letter? It, it has, and he says, it has the good, bad, and the ugly about me. The judge gets it and can go under the mandatory minimum like time served. So basically, he's saying, I need this 5K letter. You know, basically, the 5K letter is a letter that they give to the judge and, you know, pretty much asking for leniency and everything like that and not to be too hard on you because you cooperated with the government and you gave them the information you know. If you get, That's what they tell you when they're in that room. If you help us, we'll help you. You trying to go home? Are you trying to go home? You've been going around telling everybody, sorry, nigga, I'm trying to come home. This is your chance. It says 6 9 without a 5K, one, without a 5K one letter, the minimum I could serve would be 47 years. Damn. The minimum is 47 years that he'll be serving. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh-huh, yep, he tell, yep. Everybody. Everybody. He don't want to play this game no more, people. He do not want to play this game called life no more. He don't care who he has to tell on. He don't care. They could tell him to go stab a motherfucker right now in court. And if it'll get him another six months off his sentence, he'll do it. Actually, these are the most dangerous type of people. Because they would do anything to save their own ass. Like the majority of people in the world. It says, no further questions. Uh, uh, uh. Then they asked him, after the robbery in Times Square, were you with videotape all the guys in the lobby, male murdering them, shot he threw the gun in your lap, and you said you're too famous to hold a gun? He said, no. I said, I'm too famous to get out the car with a gun. They said, what's trolling to you? He said, showing a little bit of my personality. I wasn't trolling. I made a video saying, fuck Chief Keith." And then they said, didn't you order the shooting? He said, correct. I'm trying to tell you, man, he was playing this gangster game on all, 11, um, all Madden level. Shit, that nigga, that nigga telling motherfuckers, fuck you, fuck your bitch, fuck your mama. I wish you was motherfucking dead. And, I'm, and he's calling shots, putting hits on people for $50,000. It says if you get time served, you'll get out. At the beginning of the next year, correct? And 6 9 said, correct. Yes, that is absolutely our deal. I would get out at the beginning of next year. Fuck 47 years. I'll be out this motherfucker right now. They said, you're not being prosecuted for, a shoot for shooting a gun in the Barclays Center. He said, correct. 
So then they start playing the video. Y'all remember after the shooting at the Barkley Center, you know, he hopped online and was bragging about it and shit, talking about how niggas was ducking and shit. They said, so you were mocking them for ducking when fired on? 6 9 said, correct. They said, do you think it's surprising that someone ducks when a gun is fired at them? And 6 9 said, no, not surprising. It said, did you say I have so many Instagrams, bro? I'm the king of getting my Instagrams deleted. And then he said, was that in the interview? I have no recollection of saying that. Oh, 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 oh. Now 6 9 don't have no recollection of saying some shit. So he, he don't remember the shit about his motherfucking Instagrams. He remember everything else, though. It said, you still have a lot. They asked him, do you still have a lot of fans? He said, I hope so. You put out a record after you were in jail. Dummy boy. Yes. Were you popular in jail? Objection. Then somebody said sustain. They said it was irrelevant. Then they said, did you, um, then they said, did you sign autographs for guards? He said, not the guards for the nurses. They said, is jail lonely for you? They be asking stupid ass questions. They seem stupid, but it really be helping them build their case. It said, is jail lonely for you? It said, what do you mean lonely? Yes, jail is really lonely. You damn right, jail is probably motherfucking lonely. Shit, you up in there, motherfucker, by yourself all the goddamn time with a whole bunch of other people. Because, you know, he's in protected custody. So, you know, he's in there with a whole bunch of other side nigga. I'm trying to come home, people. Is jail lonely? Is it fun? Shit. They act like that motherfucker was doing concerts in that bitch. It says, now Nuke Max lawyer is Crocs examining 6 9 about gummo. How many trade nine hand sick um how many non trade hand signals are in it? You want it to be perfect, right? I, and then he said, Yes, I want all my music videos to be perfect. They asked him how many members of the Bloods it was. He said hundreds of thousands. They said, how about nine Trey? He said, I don't know. I'm not a statistic. Mm, mm, mm. Do you ever recall um, ever challenging Triple, Red, Triple uh, Red to a fight? He said, no. Casanova, no. Say he made a challenge to fight his best friend with the Woo. Um, he said in around all-star game, people bothered you. Some gang members were mad that you didn't check in and Harv squashed the situation. He said, no, it was me. Harv, his girlfriend, a light-skinned chick, taller than me. I believe she has a daughter or something. God damn. Nigga, bring, man, listen, man. This is why this, he's doing a lot more telling. He's basically going over all the information that I went over in my first two videos of the sorry nigga. I'm trying to come home chronicles because uh, he's getting Crocs examined right now. So he's basically saying a lot of the same information that I already told you guys. But let me say this to y'all. Life is not a video game. You can't pretend to be a gangster, do some gangster shit, and then think you could just put the controller down and say game over. Life does not work that way. Please tell people that you know is going down the wrong way and you know they can't handle this type of shit when they get caught. Tell them, man, life ain't a video game, man. Life ain't a motherfucking video game. It's not. Everybody's going down, except for maybe him. But he ain't going to, I can't necessarily say he ain't going to have a career because a lot of his fans are not like OG fans. A lot of his fans... They don't give a fuck about what he done because they could they could care less as long as he make good motherfucking music. That's what it's all going to be about. I'm going to tell you right motherfucking now. You're going to hear it here first. If 6 9 can somehow get out this situation and he come back out with a motherfucking hit record, everybody, is gonna, everybody ain't going to forget about this shit, but he's going to be able to continue his motherfucking career. I done seen too much shit go on in the music business where it was just a hit record. That's it. Whatever bullshit they had going on in their life, as long as they was able to put out another hit record, it all goes away. So that's going to be his main his main um, focus. Make a hit record. And the, enough people is going to love him again when he's going to be able to continue his life. Everybody's saying he's going to get his head bust when he come out. I'm not necessarily sure about that. Because, you know, when you think about it, it's a lot of people out here walking around that did the same shit that Takashi is doing, then did worse than what Takashi is doing, and they out here, motherfucker, just walking around 
It ain't shit happened to him <laughs> Zimmerman You understand what I'm saying So we definitely gonna see And I'm definitely gonna continue To keep y'all updated On the sorry nigga I'm trying to come home chronicles But please leave, leave a comment Like share this video Let me know what you think Look at my other Takashi 69 videos. Let me know if you'll be willing to call in to the show if I open up the phone lines. Y'all tell me information too. I'll be reading my comments. Sometimes y'all tell me stuff. I don't know. I appreciate that. I really do. No matter how many people is watching this channel. Like I said, I'm not a big channel. But I'm working on building up my subscribers and everything like that. I'm, wor I'm working on it. But until, until I continue to keep building and keep building, I'm going to rock with the people that's right here with me. I can't focus on the millions and millions of subscribers I don't got. I got to focus on the people that actually subscribe to my channel because they didn't have to do that. Y'all didn't have to do that. So I appreciate it. No matter how many subscribers I got, no, how, no matter how many views I got, I rock with y'all and I appreciate y'all. And that's real. And I'm going to keep y'all updated on this situation. And like always, thank you for coming. This has been Tie Game Nation Entertainment. Please do not forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, like, comment, and share this video because it's no game but Tie Game. You on out promote me. Oh, yeah, yeah.